Ladies and gentlemen, St. Paul's Episcopal Church, welcome to the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga School of Nursing for their Nurse Anesthesia Master Hooding Ceremony. We ask that there be no flash photography. And out of the respect to all graduates, we request you hold your applause until the end. Now please stand for the procession of the graduates. My name is Chris Smith and I'm the director of the School of Nursing and it is my honor this morning to welcome you to the honors and recognition ceremony for the Master of Science in Nursing Nurse Anesthesia class of 2022. I actually became involved in this with this class uh, teaching them advanced health assessment via Zoom. I remember seeing you for the first time in all those small boxes. That was a challenge, but you all have really come through and I think are much better for the experiences that you have. As you all know, or you all know for sure, and mo maybe you all in the audience don't, I am not Dr. Linda Hill. Dr. Linda Hill is the coordinator of the Nurse Anesthesia Program, and she could not be with you this morning for a very, very special reason. About six months ago, I was informed that Dr. Hill has received the highest honor in the nurse anesthesia profession. This morning, as we all are sitting here, she is getting ready to be inducted as a fellow in the American, nurses Associ American Association of Nurse Anesthetists program. Of the 58,000 nurse anesthetists in this country, only 116 of them are inducted into this fellowship. She is the first fellow for the School of Nursing in its 45 year history. So we are so honored with, with this honor for Dr. Hill. She was very torn about not being with you all this morning because this is the first graduation that she has missed for the, her students. But again, this is a once in a lifetime honor that I am pretty sure no other faculty member in our, in our School of Nursing will ever achieve. Let me tell you just a little bit about Dr. Hill. She joined the School of Nursing as faculty program coordinator of the Nurse Anesthesia Concentration in 2005. But prior to that appointment, she was an assistant professor and associate program director for the Nurse Anesthesia Option at the University of Tennessee at Memphis College of Nursing. She be began her career there as an affiliate faculty member in acute nursing. Dr. Hill began her nursing career as an associate degree nurse and subsequently earned her bachelor's, her master's in nursing, and then two doctorates. One as a doctor of nursing practice from Rush University and then a doctor of nursing science from the University of Tennessee Health Science Center. Her nursing career has led her to work in the intensive care units at Regional Medical Center in Memphis, UT Bald Hospital, and the Veterans Administration. She worked predominantly with the UT Medical Group Department of Anesthesiology in Memphis for clinical practice. Dr. Hill, whether you know it or not, has presented nationally on the topics of diversity, specifically as it relates to the nurse anesthesia profession, and her focus is reducing health disparities. 
She's also presented on her work regarding admissions to nurse anesthesia programs and has been successful in obtaining federal grants which specifically impact nurse anesthesia traineeships. Many of you are the recipients of these traineeships which help defray the cost of school. Most notably, Dr. Hill has served as the president of the Tennessee Association of Nurse Anesthetists and she was appointed commissioner to Governor Bill Haslam's Tennessee Commission on Pain and Addiction Medicine education prior to the start of COVID-19. So you can see that Dr. Hill is a very accomplished nurse anesthetist and educator and as we speak is receiving an honor that only 115 other people in this profession have achieved. So join me in congratulating her virtually or through the air. I hope she gets the, our good vibes. Congratulations, Dr. Hill. At each honors and recognition ceremony, we like to acknowledge those few people in, this, in the university who are so supportive of our graduates. And on behalf of Dr. Uh, Stephen Angle, who is our chancellor, and Provost Gerald Hale, I would like to ask Dr. Valerie Rutledge, who is the dean of our College of Health Education and Professional Studies, to greet the students. Dr. Rutledge. Good morning. You notice both Dr. Smith and I lowered the microphone so we'd be able to speak through it. First of all, I'm not sure whose smiles are wider. These over here are all of the people who are sitting around throughout the sanctuary who have stood by them, uh, supported them when things got difficult, been there to help them when they were studying, and simply been a significant factor in their achievement today. You are entering one of the most respected, and valued areas. And in fact, I was talking to Dr. Smith earlier this week and said, every time I go to an area hospital, the first question I ask is, did you go to UTC? It always makes me feel a lot more comfortable because I know the quality of the program. Thank all of you for being their support system through this program. Thank you for undertaking what is clearly a challenging but rewarding next step in your profession. And I know everyone here up on the stage welcomes you to this area that they have found so valuable. So congratulations and welcome. I'd like to recognize the nursing faculty, any CRNA or MD preceptor who are with us today because really they're the ones who are most instrumental in your education. Uh, they are the ones who assure that our program remains a quality educational experience and that these graduates are ready to walk into the operating room without missing a beat. Our students typically do not have to go through a preceptorship. They walk out and those uh, anesthesiologists re recognize very early on that they are ready to, ready to launch. So we thank them. So faculty, please stand and let us recognize you for your dedication in helping our graduates. At this time, I would like to ask Dr. Laura Tyndall, Assistant Coordinator of the Nurse Anesthesia Program, to come forward, and she will moderate the remainder of the program. Dr. Tyndall. Good morning. Um, at this time, I would like to ask uh, one of our students, Michael Moore, to come forward for the invocation. Thank you, Dr. Tyndall, and uh, thank you to St. Paul's for this beautiful space. We really appreciate y'all hosting us today, and uh, thank you for the families to come by. I just wanted to um, say thank you. I'm honored to be voluntold to be up here to produce an invocation <laughs> for you all. Um, as, a, as a point of order, before we get started, I want to remind the class of 2022 that the three carbohydrate mechanisms of the liver are glycogenesis, glycogenolysis, and gluconeogenesis. Um, We've all had uh, very humbling experiences throughout this program, and I'm sure that there are infinitely more to come, and that was one of mine previously. Um, but honestly, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, we really appreciate 
uh, everyone making these incredibly long journeys to come join us today. Um, thank you to everyone that's online right now that's joining us virtually. Uh, love you, Granddad. Um, <laughs> Um, I hope everyone here feels like they are being celebrated just as much as us graduates. Um, there's certainly, um, you know, the support and sacrifices that you guys have shed um, throughout the duration of this program uh, really means a lot. And so we, we are so thankful for you guys um, and we hope that you feel celebrated as well. Um, uh, I promise uh, we'll spend a lot more time with you when this is over. <laughs> um, um, and for those that are interested, um, I'd, I'd love to invite you all to join me in prayer. Um, God, uh, thank you for this opportunity to gather and celebrate these years of victory and hardship. Uh, we're so thankful to have had you with us on this journey. We thank you for the friends and the family that are with us now and throughout the world for their unending support. Thank you for their patience and understanding. We know that uh, that's been a divine intervention. Thank you for your wisdom that you've given us uh, to take care of your people. Keep us humble and aware of the duty that we have to bring goodness to the world with the gifts you've given us. We ask that you watch over us, as you always have, as we go our separate ways to serve our communities. We ask that you guide our hands, guide our minds, as we take our first steps in this long journey of growth ahead. Help us remember why we do this, help us remember each other, and help us remember you. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you. Um, also, we have uh, recognition of clinical preceptors and guest speakers, and we would ask that Emory Dunn come and um, talk about our wonderful preceptors. Hello. At this time, we would like to recognize all clinical preceptors in attendance. If you are a CRNA or an MD preceptor, please stand to be recognized. <laughs> Every year, the graduating class votes on a CRNA and anesthesiologist preceptor of the year. This year's recipients are Megan Metelka and Dr. Tarrant. These preceptors were selected by the class for their dedication to teaching, clinical leadership, and advocacy for their patients. We cannot overstate what an impact their kindness and support have had on us. We are so thankful for the warm welcome they have given us to the profession, and we can't wait to see how our practice will be shaped by their teaching. We would like uh, Megan to come up and say a few words at this time. So, like she said, I'm Megan. Got to hang out with these guys for the past couple years. I'm in a really fun group. Um, <laughs> so I had to write this for them. So, um, I've had the privilege of working with this fun group throughout their training the past two years. It's been really fun spending time with them and watching them grow into the providers they are today. We've been through a lot together. We've had some difficult cases, some difficult patients, some messy traumas, many late nights, even more early mornings, some great conversations and a lot of laughs. When they first asked me to speak at their graduation, I was really shocked. <laughs> and I got a little teary and then I got just really nervous. My heart rate's like 130 right now. <laughs> uh, public speaking is not my strong suit, but I told these guys I would give it a shot. So. I thought back to my own graduation here in this room four years ago. Gwen Lambert, a really great CRNA and wonderful mentor, gave a really thoughtful speech to my class, um, so the bar was really high. I sat down to start writing and immediately realized I actually needed to write two speeches, one for the family and friends here today and one for the graduates. So to start, to the family and friends, you guys are nothing short of amazing. I know from experience that a good support system throughout uh, training is very key to success and this class couldn't have done it without you. I don't say that lightly and I hope you're very proud of yourselves for enduring the trials of their training by their sides. Some of you picked up your lives and moved here from other states. Some of you changed jobs. Some of you raised children and all of you took on 
more than your share of household and relationship responsibilities just so that your loved ones could have their best uh, chances at success. So you are a key part to their presence here today and I want to thank you for all you've done and will continue to do for them in the future. Now the second part of the speech where I attempt to impart wisdom to my friends who I can now call <laughs> colleagues. But as Socrates said, the only true wisdom is knowing that you know nothing. So considering that fact, take these words as more like a snack for your brain. <laughs> I know I like snacks. Um, <laughs> it may be really good and tasty or it may not be for you. Or maybe it just needs to be seasoned with something else to be just right. But however you wish, I hope you find some meaning in it. If I were a better writer and public speaker, this is where I would start by relaying some sort of parable that aligns intricately with your experience the past two years, while at the same time communicating a very wise and underlying theme that arches into a grand finale that's really easily remembered and wrapped neatly in a bow. Um, but I didn't do that. I <laughs> just made a list of <laughs> random thoughts and sayings, quotes, and general advice that I like. Uh, so some are about anesthesia, some are about life, some are my own, but most are from people much smarter or well-spoken than myself. So I hope you keep the snacks that you like and spit out what you don't, or at the very least, I hope at least you laugh. <laughs> okay, number one. Do the best you can until you know better, and then when you know better, do better. Maya Angelou said that. I know you feel like you've learned an astronomical amount of information over the past two years, but trust me, there's still a lot of things that you don't know. I've been practicing four years now, and I still learn something new every day. A lot of you have even taught me things throughout the years, so thank you. Um, so please hear me when I say it's okay to say that you don't know. Saying you don't know means you're willing to acknowledge your limits, and admitting you have limits is the first step to growing beyond them. Let your limits inspire you to always be learning and to do so with a spirit of humility, so that when you know better, do better, but never stop trying to know better. Number two, adapt and overcome. A CRNA who trained me, David, told me this, and it really stuck with me. Being able to adapt quickly is a skill that can always be improved and refined. Never stop developing this skill. Remember, it's not the strongest or the most intelligent that survives and thrives. It's the one most responsive to change. So keep your toolbox full of tricks. Never stop trying new things. Do not become complacent. Think outside the box. Challenges usher in creativity. We are our most innovative when something is pushing back at us, so be gracious for the challenges. Learn from the obstacles. This applies not just to anesthesia, but also to life. The familiar quote, a jack of all trades is a master of none, has led us to believe that being good at multiple different techniques uh, and specialties just means that we're not great at any of them. But the rest of that sentence is never mentioned. The full quote says, a jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. So there really are a thousand different ways to do anesthesia. Make sure you're well versed in the majority of them. It'll really serve you well. Number three, don't make a straight line crooked. Sometimes it really is that simple. Sometimes the most simple solution is the best solution. Don't rely solely on familiar routines, but don't forget about them either. Although your toolbox should also be full of complex solutions and techniques, like mixing ketamine and Presidex and like seven other things into one bag, <laughs> don't underestimate the good old Versed fentanyl, lidocaine, propofol, and rock. Okay. <laughs> Number four, be curious, not judgmental. Walt Whitman. Uh, this speaks for itself, but I think the world would be a better place if we all followed this rule more often. Number five, never say never. There's one exception to rule number five, it's never turn down a break. <laughs> number six, culture smothers innovation in its crib. Most of you are going off to work in new facilities, and if you haven't already realized, a culture of a workplace has a tremendous impact on individual experiences. I challenge you to not fall into the culture blindly. Don't fully invest in the status quo. Disrupt it, question things, challenge people. If someone says to you that's just the way we've always done it, I hope that's a red flag and I hope you think of this talk. I hope it inspires you to not be afraid to challenge the status quo for something you believe in. I hope you cultivate creativity and bring value to your new workplaces. Don't underestimate the value of small changes. You may not be able to initiate a large change in a group, but your daily actions over time certainly lead to big change, so don't forget that. 
Number seven, if you think everyone hates you, you probably just need to sleep. And if you think you hate everyone, you probably just need to eat. Don't forget to take care of yourself. You've spent the last few years deprived of sleep, constantly stressed, and probably eating way too much Chick-fil-A and crumble cookies. <laughs> so that's all over now, so don't underestimate a good balanced meal and eight hours of sleep. You deserve, you deserve it. Uh, number eight, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. Comparison is a thief of joy, so spend so much time watering your own grass that you don't even notice anyone else's yard. Number nine, Perception is reality. Another great CRNA, Scott, who trained me, said this on my first day of class. And I think uh, it applies to all areas of life and should be something like a baseline to which we frequently return to assess ourselves. Our perception shapes our reality, but no two people perceive things exactly the same. Um, so following that logic, there's eight billion realities in the world. Don't be afraid to step into another person's shoes and walk around for a little while. If you're open to it, you'll learn a lot. Be intrigued by alternate points of view. Challenge your own reality from time to time. Let the fluidity of life foster an open mind and let it guide you to new places and new ideas uh, and new ideas. Choosing to perceive things as a glass half full rather than half empty will make all the difference, trust me. And number 10, be kind. Never underestimate the value of kindness. I hope I've been a good example of this throughout your training because it's something that I really believe. And, as I, and I hope as you move forward in your career and train others uh, that you remember this too. A little Starbucks doesn't hurt either. <laughs> so now I want you guys to think back two years to when you started here. You probably felt very much in over your head, and you were. There's a very steep learning curve coming into anesthesia for which you are not prepared no matter what experience as a nurse that you have. And as you quickly realize the difficulty of the task set before you, you probably frequently had to tell yourself, just do it. Just set the alarm for 4 a.m. Just stay up one more hour to study. Just read one more article. Just keep going. Your instructors and CRNAs also probably often told you, just do it. Just push this drug. Just put the tube in. Just go take a break. <laughs> uh, but at first, you didn't even know why you were doing these things, but you just kind of did them. And as you started doing these things, they probably started to make sense. And as they made more sense, they got easier. And you may even say they became fun. And you probably realized that you didn't even have to tell yourself, just do it quite as often. And eventually, you didn't have to tell yourself, just do it at all. Because there you were doing it with ease and intention and grace. And as you struggled through these millions of everyday moments, you were building a network of knowledge that culminated in you sitting here today. It was a wild ride, but here you are finally finished, and I'm glad to uh, be the first to say congratulations. You did it. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>
uh, one of my greatest hesitations was that I wouldn't have the opportunity to teach. Um, I knew I'd be working with students, but I was unsure as to what sort of involvement I would have uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And to my great surprise and delight, uh, we got to spend a lot of time together uh, learning side by side. So uh, the truth is, you've made me a better physician and a person. And uh, I learn as much from you as hopefully you've learned from me. So again, with all sincerity, thank you. Uh, in thinking about what I would talk about today, uh, I kept coming back to the same thing. I think Megan and I had the, the same idea. It's what advice would I have given myself two years ago when I was sitting in that same chair? First is use your resources. Many of them are in this room today, family, friends, classmates. And just remember that even when those days are tough, you may feel overwhelmed or alone, you're never alone. Lean on others and share the burden. What we do every day is not easy. It's rewarding, but not easy. Hold on to the knowledge that we're all in this together. Second, commit yourself to lifelong learning. Anesthesia is a dynamic field, as you've already learned and has already been alluded to this morning. There's multiple different ways of doing things, but always be pursuing what's best and what's safest. To borrow a line that my father frequently likes to use, question everything all the time. And finally, don't lose sense of the awe and wonder for what it is you get to do every day. An attending of mine in medical school called anesthesia one of the only non-normative specialties meaning our primary responsibility is not fixing a broken bone, removing a diseased appendix, or getting someone's A1C to go. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> we get to provide relief from anxiety, reduce pain and suffering, and maintain homeostasis, which is awesome. <laughs> Anesthesia is truly a miracle of modern medicine and let that inspire you that you have the privilege and abilities to provide that comfort to people every day. In closing, I want to thank you all again for this honor. Remember, you're never alone. Always be learning and be inspired by what you do. With that, let me be one of the first to congratulate you in this <laughs> accomplishing this <laughs> monumental achievement second now. Uh, third, fourth, I, I've lost count. Um, <laughs> I truly have enjoyed our time together. To some of you, I look forward to working with you as colleagues in the coming days. And to the others, I wish you health and happiness in your new careers. Thank you. me again. Um, <clears throat> at this point in the ceremony, I would like to present a couple awards uh, to our students, uh, the Agatha Hodgkins Award and the Thomas Brett Hill Service Award. Um, each year, I'm going to give the Agatha Hodgkins Award first. Each year, the Agatha Hodgkins Memorial Award is presented to a graduating student um, at UTC in the nurse anesthesia program. Um, and this, <clears throat> excuse me, this award recognizes excellent um, practice within the graduating class and reminds us that Agatha Hodgkins is one of the founders of, um, in the field of nurse anesthesia. Her career began um, in the early 1900s. She was a clinician. She was one of the first educators and a very um, early leader in the nurse anesthesia profession. 
Um, at that time, there were no formal education for nurse anesthesia. So um, to be able to get into anesthesia school, the surgeons would go to the nurses and ask them, uh, would handpick them and ask them to become a nurse anesthetist. Um, and because they really trusted their, um, that they would provide safe anesthesia. And some of the things they really looked for was clinical curiosity, attention to detail, vigilance, um, and caring. And these were some of the qualities that the surgeons would look for, um, for to choose their nurse anesthetist. After a few years in practice, Ms. Hodgkins founded one of the early nurse anesthesia programs. And this was the Lakeside School of Anesthesia in Cleveland, Ohio in 1915. Um, the training was only six months and the cost was only $50. <laughs> Does anybody want to go to school for $50? <laughs> um, she was very passionate about developing the profession of nurse anesthesia. She um, actually spearheaded our professional organization in 1931 and became the first uh, president. And today that is known as the American Association of Nurse Anesthetists. So Ms. Hodkins and those anesthetists who preceded her and who have followed, followed her have been the role models for all of us in anesthesia. And their legacy in our profession as nurse anesthetists um, um, is what we attain. Each year, clinical preceptors uh, select a graduating student um, to be a recipient of the Agatha Hodgkins Award for Outstanding Nurse Anesthesia Graduate Student. Um, this award is a recognition plaque and a monetary award funded from the Nurse Anesthesia Gift Fund. This isn't a popularity vote. Um, it's a thoughtful selection. We send, uh, we ask all our preceptors and all of our um, clinical sites to um, vote on who uh, should um, get this award. It's a thoughtful selection and we look at who uh, emulates the quality of clinical excellence, leadership, and professionalism that really Ms. Hodgkins uh, established many years ago. So the clinical preceptors at Chattanooga selected a graduate to receive this award today, and I am extremely pleased and honored to present this incredibly special award to Jesse Mitchell. Also, at our Tupelo campus, uh, those clinical uh, preceptors also selected someone to receive this award, and that was Josh Muscagney. I also have another award, and this is called the Thomas Brett Hill Nurse Anesthesia Service Award. This is not an award we give every year. It was established in 2016 by nurse anesthesia faculty in the School of Nursing at UTC, and it recognizes a graduating student who demonstrates the qualities of Thomas Brett Hill. He was an acute care nurse practitioner, um, and he's also, he was also the, is the late husband of our, of our director, Dr. Linda Hill. Um, the qualities that Brett embodied include selflessness, kindness, loyalty, and service to others. 
Brett was a quiet leader, as evidenced by his service not only to his country, but also to his profession, serving as an advocate for those who had no one else to champion their causes. The recipients of this award demonstrates quiet leadership and professionalism as a student in the nurse anesthesia concentration at UTC. Um, the recipients also must demonstrate service to both within and outside of the School of Nursing. So from time to time, nominations are solicited from nurse anesthesia faculty at UTC, and uh, this award is given when we have uh, identified a deserving nominee. There will be an, a monetary award, a trophy, and the recipient's name will be placed on a plaque that resides in the School of Nursing at UTC. Uh, UTC nurse anesthesia faculty were asked to nominate a recipient for the, this award this year. Um, this year we have two recipients. Uh, the first recipient from Chattanooga cohort is Brianna Covington. I'm going to talk about Brianna just for a second. Um, several of our faculty nominated Brianna, and these are some things that they wrote. I would like to nominate Brianna Covington for the Thomas Brett Hill Nurse Anesthesia Award. Brianna is an outstanding clinician. She is quiet and humble, but very much engaged in all aspects of anesthesia. She's a strong, patient advocate and a valuable member of the team. Her quiet strength is a testament to her core leadership abilities. She's very confident, but not arrogant. She is brilliant, yet teachable. Her smile can warm your heart and make your day. One of her goals, she came to me after class one day and said one of her goals was to give back by becoming a nurse anesthesia educator. And we would love to have you one day. I've already been working on her to go back to school. Uh, she is everything you would want to see in a leader and in an advanced practice nurse. Congratulations, Brianna. All right, and from our Tupelo co cohort, um, they chose Josh Muscagney. All right, and this is from Brian Estes. He's one of our clinical faculty at uh, our Tupelo campus. Uh, from day one, he has been the epitome of how a future CRNA should perform. He has routinely displayed a worth, work ethic that cannot be taught. From never hesitating to stay late for an extra learning experience to helping his classmates, Josh continuously shows a strong desire to advance the profession. He loves what he is doing and it shows. It has been a pleasure to teach Josh and learn from him also. He truly will be an asset to our profession. Thank you, congratulations. <laughs> Also, we have another award that was uh, given earlier this spring, and it is the Outstanding Graduate Student Award. And um, it was nominated, and Brianna Covington uh, received that award this spring.
At this time, we would now recognize the uh, MSN nurse anesthesia graduates by hooding them. Dr. Chris Smith and Dr. Valerie Rutledge will participate in the hooding and recognition of these graduates. Jennifer Lee Allen. Morgan Eddie Butler. Brianna Kimari Covington. Emery Lee Dunn. Kevin Michael Ennis. <laughs> I'm really disappointed he didn't wear his famous shorts. Andrew Miller Lamb. Stephen Robert Keesling. Joshua Aaron Miscagney. Taylor Michaeletti. Jessica Long Mitchell. <laughs> Zenit Moman.
Michael Howard Moore. Sarah Thompson Moore. <laughs> Megan Renee Nash. Elizabeth Ashton Rogers. Brittany Taylor Roth. Cody Blake Sherlin. <laughs> Cody Griffith Stewart. Katherine Sloan Taylor. Taylor Ann Van Rossum. Chelsea Gwen Varnell. At this time, I would like to ask Brianna Covington to come forward uh, for the recognition of faculty. Good morning, everyone. 27 months ago, our class entered the most uncertain, intimidating, yet exciting time of our lives. As seasoned ICU nurses, we welcome the prospect of anesthesia school, an opportunity and long-standing goal that most of us have held for many years. Some of us entered with preconceived notions of what two years would look like, and some of us were still uneasy from the uncertainty that COVID brought, not only to our lives, but to our academic course and healthcare in general. Through all of the change and transition we experienced with our start to CRNA school, there is one thing that we quickly learned, and that is that hard work would be the only certainty within our journey towards our goals. As the excitement of admission to CRNA school drifted away and the realization of the time, energy, and fortitude needed to be successful set in, we learned that this journey would not be easy. Still, we learned the art and the science of anesthesia 
we learned just how vital anesthesia providers are to the world of healthcare, and we learned that we are capable of being the compassionate, competent, and safe providers that our communities expect. We would not have learned all of that and everything that we've been taught within the past two years without our faculty. To our faculty, thank you for guiding us through the transition from bedside registered nurse to advanced care provider. Thank you for challenging us and preparing us. It is because of you that we know we will be ready for a profession that demands vigilance and skill. As some of us go on to practices all across the country, we know that wherever we all end up, we will excel. And it is our time within this program, with your teachings, and with the experience we've gained here, that we know we can do anything. Now, we are finally ready to step into our futures as CRNAs. And again, we appreciate our faculty for all that they've contributed to us during this journey. Thank you. time, I would like to ask Stephen Kiesling to come forward for a tribute to family and friends. You even raised the mic for me. That's nice. <laughs> uh, well, good morning. Thank you all for, uh, for coming. Uh, you know, 27 months ago, we signed on to a Zoom session from the confines of our house, not really knowing what we were in store for. And then it wasn't until just, a, I don't know, a few short months later, we were running through the halls of the OR looking for the McClot mix and Miller blades, trying to figure out what anesthesia was and, and how we were going to do that. And through the 27 months, you know, our class was able to stick together to, uh, to get through. We carried each other, you know, several times through clinicals, over lunch breaks. But that, that only lasted for a few hours at the hospital. Uh, without a doubt, this journey for all of us started much, much longer ago than just 27 months. It was years ago of, of nursing school, working through the ICU, and then ultimately, you know, coming into the school. But what I'm saying is not, none of this would have happened without each and every one of you sitting out there uh, supporting us, cheering us on, telling us it'll be worth it, you, at least so you've heard. Uh, you know, that, that it, it really is... You guys, you know, we're, we are the ones the proverbial spotlight is on, but we all know that we didn't get here alone. It was, it was the support of each and every one of you, the ones that couldn't be with us today. We've all lost loved, you know, loved ones. Several of us have lost loved ones throughout the program, uh, grandparents, uh, you know, just so, so thank you to, to each and every one of you uh, for loving us, for supporting us, for encouraging us. And while we get to celebrate, you know, this day is you know, supposedly about us, it's really about all of you out there. We're, we're here to celebrate with you, you're here to celebrate with us, and to know that, that we are not just social acquaintances anymore. We are family, we do exist, we will be around more, and we will be able to enjoy the life that, that you all have helped us build. So thank you so much for coming, for, for supporting us and, and celebrating us, because we are celebrating you. Thank you. afraid of this, but I would like to ask Kevin Ennis to come forward and say a few words of reflection. Uh, I don't know who thought this was a good idea, but here we are. Uh, so anesthesia school is hard. Um, Everyone talks about that before you begin a program. Um, everyone tells you you'll be away from your friends and family. Uh, you won't have an income for 27 months. You won't have time to pursue any of your hobbies. Uh, but uh, the sacrifices that we all make throughout the program, it's no secret, but it still doesn't touch what you go through in these 27 months. Um, everyone says to look around you the first couple meetings, even though ours were over Zoom. Uh, because the people you're with will become your friends and family. 
over the course of those 27 months, and that could not have been more true. <clears throat> uh, it's impossible to go through such an experience and not develop an unforgettable bond uh, with those around you, and the bonds you develop, along with, as Stephen said, the support of your friends and family, are what keep you going every day. Um, every cohort of students has their struggles. Uh, ours was no different. Um, <clears throat> Our personal struggle was that of entering into anesthesia in a time of uh, uncertainty. Came with COVID pandemic, uh, starting our first classes over Zoom, not knowing what clinical would look like or whether it would even happen. Um, <clears throat> and these experiences have followed us even up until this point. <clears throat> so from beginning with Zoom and raised simulation rodeo to, <laughs> to, to, to anything that's happened to us so far, uh, we never really had the opportunity to prepare uh, it was always taking things day by day, and I think that has made us better clinicians and able to face the adversity that takes place in the operating room every day. Uh, our class expects nothing, <clears throat> and we're ready for anything. Um, beyond this, our class has never accepted the status quo, uh, regardless of how it's been received by those around us. <laughs> uh, we've always been willing to try different things, and do whatever we feel like is best for our patients. Uh, I've heard from many of our anesthesia colleagues that, that every class is different, uh, and I'm proud to be among those of you who choose to pro push the norm every single day. Uh, whether it has anything to do with the systemic culture shift or simply the opinionated virtues of our class, uh, I know that all of us will continue to strive to both push ourselves and the practice of anesthesia to the limits uh, for the betterment of our patients. Um, regardless of the opinions of those around us, I believe that we all know that uh, MAFAT is the most important part of any anesthetic, followed by a beautiful emergence, and we will continue to implement this and everything else that we have learned in the program. Uh, as we depart and move on in anesthesia careers, I'm proud to say that uh, I'm leaving after all these months with an even bigger family than I started, and I could not have imagined doing this with any other group of people. Thank you. Um, I would like to ask Rachel Dahl to come up and give the closing remarks. I figured everyone needed a job, so. <laughs> yes, I can count on Laura always to find me a job. <laughs> she found me this job. That's good. <laughs> so I got a robocall um, last week, or maybe two weeks ago, and I listened to it, and I guess it was serendipitous. And the beginning of the call said, every season has an expiration date. I've never seen 20 people plus people look so good when they've reached their expiration date. <laughs> um, but what, what that meant to me was to everything there is a season, to everything there is a purpose. And these folks before us have been called to be nurses, and they've been called to be nurse anesthetists. When I think of your class, I'm going to remember resilience. Just as all of you all have touched on, you have gone to school and navigated what I hope in our lifetime is the most significant health crisis in America. And these students have pushed forward in the nursing profession and have continued to pursue their education because they want to care for patients and because they want to care for patients well. Um, I told you all when I first met you, because you were the first class I ever got to teach to, thank you for listening, <laughs> that this is the greatest profession in the world, and I believe that, and I'm so proud to welcome you into it. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you will do to our patients and for our patients. I'm proud of you. I'm teary, but I'm congrats. <laughs> Knowing how Rachel loves to talk, I thought it would be longer than that. That's why I sat down. <laughs> uh, at this time, I would like to really congratulate our graduates. And if we could all give them a hand.
We're very proud of you, proud that you're in our profession now, you're our colleagues, and congratulations. If you would stand for the procession.